Hey, hey, how's it going? How's it going? How are you? <laughs> ah, doing, doing good. Very nice to meet you, man. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. It's nah. crazy. Like, I was getting ready to do it last week, and I just got really sick all of a sudden. Just luckily, it was only for one day. I think I had like food poisoning or something. But ooh, that sucks, man. I got I got food poisoning overseas um, during my first overseas trip, and it was terrible, man. So so I I feel you, but um, welcome everyone. I'm here with I mean Dylan Gardner of Communicate and Solo Work. It's awesome to be here. Um, I'm gonna dive straight into it. So you've done like this Taylor Swift sort of thing, like with your cryptic Instagram messages, and we finally have a date. We finally have a single. You yeah. said it's you know completely different, new sound. I mean, you got to give me more. Um yeah, so this is a record that is the most personal record I've ever made. Basically, after finishing Sun Goes Out, which came out in like 2021, yeah. uh, I I never stopped writing, which usually I like, I, I'll take some time between records to just kind of like decompress because I had just exhausted myself from yeah. overdoing it. And I, I just kind of hit the ground running. I had all these songs because I also was kind of like spending a lot of time finishing up Sun Goes Out. So sometime we're waiting around was just a, always writing and had literally had like a follow-up to some of those out within like six months had like 15 demos of songs i really liked demo sounded pretty great i don't all i had to, so i was just like okay all i'm gonna do is is go i'm gonna go to the studio uh like a rent a professional studio just for one day just to do strings and drums and i'll just knock them out and then it was like right before i did that I was like, um, maybe this is too, like, too not me now. I, I don't know how to word that right. Something happened, I think, like, maybe after going through COVID and really kind of just spending a lot of time with myself and really freeing myself with Sun Goes Out, mm -hmm. I felt that I could do something more personal, personable. Like I'm really proud of Sun Goes Out, but I I I felt I was just kind of looking around and I just I saw a lot of people around me or a lot of music around me like looking backwards, mm -hmm. which is okay, but sometimes it can get a little bit Civil War reenactor. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to I didn't want to do that. I, I I didn't want to express myself through somebody else's expression, I guess. Like, it still sounds like me, but there's definitely, like, references to, to things. And, and there will always be, but just, uh, there. I don't know. There was, some, there was something about uh, a, a costume-me-ness that I felt like I had shed. Like, it really was me at, at you know, every record I make can't help but be anything but me, right? But yeah, I, I was just kind of looking forward. And honestly, you know, I, I had gone through a pretty rough time just kind of the end of COVID was really hard for me <laughs> um and I just started writing music after just being so disillusioned with life and with uh, you know a lot of the music industry and just kind of where I was and what I found was that I kept putting in a lot of like beauty to make up for a lot of the sadness i suppose mm -hmm. and then what what ended up happening is like this record really just started to organically grow right it wasn't really thinking about the sound of it it was every sound was just like obvious to me because of the emotion uh, it wasn't like here are the references here's the this here's the that it was like they just started to become textures that were part of the emotion that i was feeling and it Really, honestly, it was, uh, I'm sure a lot of people said it was really, really therapeutic to make that record because it'd be so much fun to go and work on that record because it was, I was creating this universe now and it was so thick. Like the atmosphere in that record is so thick that I loved living in it. And I think that was the hardest part to let go for me. It was, I was really sad to leave that atmosphere. Um, yeah, I feel like I just talked for like two hours, but. You're the first person I've talked to about 
finishing this record since I finished it. Um, I haven't done an interview since, you know, Sun Goes Out. <laughs> no, no, I've seen that. I mean, I'm I'm incredibly um you know happy that you that you allowed me to do this and um I'm really um I gotta thank Mr. Rooney, uh, Cal Rooney, because he really opened this door for me. You know connecting us and um he's the goat <laughs> he really is yeah i mean i love so i love what you said will this album be, be more so you said textured it's atmospheric are we getting a spacey rock kind of album rather than a a, a drug induced like you know like sun goes out was crazy and thick but will this be almost i don't know what's the word to describe it organic and clashy and like i'm just thinking tritones it's uh I, okay, I would say this. I would say I learned a lot of things about the word psychedelic. So I'll start there. I think my whole life, I loved the word psychedelic. Um, I just was always drawn to it. When I was making some of those out, my big realization was like the word psychedelic meant that there were just like, it, it was in 3D and there's these colors just coming at you. And it was just like this endless um, canvas of possibility. It was so sick. I just loved like every time I would discover a psych record to be really cool. And one thing I was having a conversation with somebody where they were like, that music's not really psychedelic. And I was like, what do you mean? And I, they were kind of telling me their thoughts on it. And I sort of disagreed. And I was like, no, nah, man, that music's like really psychedelic. And then I just, I never thought about it for a while. And I was like, well, it is funny that that, I mean, it's like a word that we use, but like that genre is mostly like looking back to the 60s, mostly looking back to like 67, 68. And then that's like specifically what we refer to as psychedelic. But I feel like psych psychedelia itself is just like elevating you on a plane that's not just everyday life. So right. I was like, why would that have a specific sound? Why can't that be a, a feeling? Mm -hmm. So instead of having to be really spaced out or um, I started to think about records that aren't inherently psychedelic, that are psychedelic, right? Like um, I think if you were, uh, if you were to listen to the right kind of Nat King Cole song, the, the way that that makes you feel will make you leave your body 17 times more than like a song that's like telling you to leave your body you know kind of the open the mind and the third eye kind of stuff like to me just started to sink below like nat king cole singing uh stardust or yeah. something like like oh my god um and so i realized that this psychedelia quote unquote that it was the reason i started communicant among many reasons the sort of um elevated experience can come from the atmosphere and can come from the emotion of it mm -hmm. so it, it does the record does do that make you leave your body thing but in a totally different way um i would say this record's not a, it's not like a, a 60s psych record i mean that was the goal of sun goes out was to be like a uk 60s psych record like a modern take on that and i do believe that i achieved that i'm really really proud you of definitely that. Um, I think I think the new record is just a really emotional, very lush, very um, honest. I'm coming to this record a lot. Like me, Dylan, as a person, is coming through this record a lot more than um, Sun Goes Out. I wanted it to feel more like a, like a masked band kind of thing. Uh, so... You know, if it's drawing from anything in the past, it's drawing maybe more from the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, but if it is drawing from the 60s, it's drawing from a lot of Baroque pop, a lot of chamber pop, Scott Walker, Pet Sounds, yeah, yeah, uh, Fred Neal. Like, I, you know, I've always loved that music at the same time. Sometimes I was like, but the, uh, but like Pet Sounds isn't like psychedelic, but it's like, it's kind of grouped in with 60s records or like Odyssey mm -hmm. and Oracle. I was, you know, calls this big psychedelic album cover, right? Like by the zombies, but you yeah. listen to it and it's not, it's not telling you like open your third eye and there's <laughs> these space echoes and there's these, these, it's like, it's, it's like a rose for Emily. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just relate to that. I relate to the emotion. Like that was a, a big part for me too, was, was 
emotion. That's just, that's what music is, right? Like, yeah. But I always thought of other things. I was like listening, I was listening to songs for the drum tone. I was listening to songs for the guitar tone. I was listening to songs for what references it's making to other songs. Or, um, And then I realized like the best music is the closest you can get to the emotion that you're feeling when you're writing the song. So like, that was a huge part. And I realized a lot of my favorite records when I went back, like maybe they wouldn't hold up as well because they weren't actually talking about anything. Like yeah. maybe the lyrics were a, a mask for feeling something else, uh, which is a problem that I have with a lot of music. Once you kind of realize the difference, you can just tell whether something is uh, coming from their heart or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can go on for hours about it. Again, literally, I haven't talked to anybody in like a year and a half and it's like, <laughs> I'm going a million miles a minute. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, you, you're speaking from the heart and it's what I'm getting from it is that it sounds like a reflection. It sounds mm -hmm. like you've, you've shed your skin and you're, I mean, onto something new. And, you know, you've got all the fans, you know, waiting for the new record. And by the sounds of it, it sounds awesome. It sounds great. Like, it's very, very cinematic. In the same way that Sun Goes Out was, but there are so different Um they're so different into the, I mean, like, I, I wonder about, like, like, is this a communicant record? But everyone's like, yeah, duh. Like, you know, when you're so, when you're so in it, it's tough. But I think it's really nice to have the other side of the coin. I think it's really interesting. I'm kind of like working on the album artwork still as we speak. And, and Sun Goes Out is so Technicolor. And this is really black and white. This is like, just every time I see something there, they're, they're dark earth tones, they're black and white. And it's, it's like the other side of the coin, right? It's like the other extreme, but it's not, it's not reactionary, you know, because the record I made in between, which a lot of those songs did carry over working out the, re, uh, rearranging them, like the record I made in between, you know, was still in the sun goes out kind of vibe. It was like a perfect psych follow-up record. Yeah. But I felt that that would almost cheapen the end to one thing, you know, I don't, if there's anything clear about my musical career is that I don't like to be pigeonholed. So, <laughs> Man, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you're changing your sound. I mean, I I, I personally loved. Um, I don't know what 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 it was about the album, but like it's like road trip music, you know. Like sun goes <laughs> out is just like uh, we were driving from um, like Tennessee or something back home, and the sun was setting. We're in the mountains, and you're just blasting the wheel. And it's just like beautiful. And my parents hate psych music. Like they're very much pop. My dad just goes to concerts with me because he's my dad. <laughs> like they're not into that type of music, but they were bopping to it and they were jamming to it. And I played the whole record. And it's so beautiful. It's And I'm just glad to see that you have the other side of the coin. And oh, thanks so much. Something earthy, you know? I've been getting into earthy stuff too, like Cam. I mean, that's still very psychedelic. Oh, but. I love Cam. Absolutely love Cam. I mean, yeah, that's a band. Um, let's say like the psychedelia is coming from the repetitiveness or like the meditative quality of of repeating in your, you're closing your eyes and you're living in that group and the group just keeps building in on itself even though it's not changing. It's just really huge how many different ways you can get there. Yeah. Um, and how many people perfected what they were achieving really really cool <laughs> all right here all right i'm gonna go to um let's see i've got like a whole list of questions i've written down i like Please this do. one okay are you are, are you more of a long like let's say um let's say dogs are you like dogs by pink floyd are you that kind of a song or that kind of a person or are you more of a um something shorter something sweeter maybe like you know you're talking about pet sounds Say Beach Boys. Yeah. But God only knows, right? Are you more of like a short and sweet song, three, four minutes? Um, um I think so. I mean it's when the record first started, the this record like had three songs that were over seven minutes. And I don't know, there was just one day where I was just like, this is pretentious like i like it it was it was doing that like thing that the worst kind of prog does where it's like this section yeah. and this section and again it's like 
what's the emotion? What's the truth? Like if it, if it's, if it's in the emotion to be that long, then it should be that long. But if it's there because you're like jamming for the sake of jamming, or it's like just a, a part of the song, um, you know, my, my two favorite bands are the Beatles and the Beach Boys. And uh, I think there is something about shorter songs. The main thing I take away from shorter songs is I like that feeling of wanting to hear something again. Yeah. And so, and it, it is a tool I use sometimes to end something before I want to end it because it would make me and the listener want to hear it again. Um, that's something I learned from Guided by Voices where like, that guy would write a million dollar hook and sing it once. And you're like, no, 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 no. Sing it again. Sing it again. <laughs> and he never does. But then I'm like all the time, like, oh, I want to hear that one song. Like it's, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I've never thought about it, but I guess I would err more on the short and sweet side because less is more. I, I do think. That's, that's really interesting. I mean, cause if we talk about like sun goes down, right. You've got some of the longer moments, but then also like, Plastic people. I was listening to Plastic People for for the interview, and that hook that like I want to listen to it again. You know, like when right. you, it gets stuck. Like that's a good pop hook. And I mean, I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's not like as um sad like a longer song, like a longer progressive rock. Well, wonder. It's not as satisfying. You know, like I'll listen to that once a month. I listen yeah. to. It like, I don't know though. Like your album, I, I'll come back to it every couple of weeks just because. It's refreshing and it's short. It's got it, it's short and sweet and it's a bundle. I think yeah, I I definitely don't like, I don't see any rules to music. I have always generally worked under the guise of like your album should be around 45 minutes. Yeah. Just cause you know, I, I love records, right? I have a lot of records. I don't own a lot of double albums or if they are double albums, I think that they could be single albums <laughs> and and I, I, swear I can count on my hand, like, like I love the White Album as it is, but that's kind of part of its thing. And also sort of, you know, sort of first, not first first, but like, it, you know, if you're, if you're inventing it, it's okay. But there's just a lot of albums that I, I never even make it to side three and side four. I have a headache by then. Like, I'm just, because I'm, I'm, I'm spent. Um, like, Plastic People is a good example of that. So, like, the end, that ending riff. The I wrote that, and I loved that. It reminded me, like, like a little, like, George Harrison lick, like, at the end of it. And I wanted to do so much with it. And I was like, if I just, if I just put it as the song's fading out, that'd be a mic drop. Like, you're you're introducing this new melody right at the end of the song and then taking it away. It, it's, it feels... So there's something so satisfying about that. It's like when you have... A Dorito and there's not enough flavor on the Doritos. So you have to eat another one, which is like their whole shtick. That's why I think yeah. that's the secret of why you want another one. <laughs> I love the Doritos, man. Yeah. And that's super, that's so real too. Like you want the perfectly flavored cookie Dorito. If have, you get all the flavor on the Dorito, you're like, I'm good. Just wondering. Honestly, so honestly though, like when, it's, <laughs> when it's not enough, I, it's not enough. Perfect amount. I've got to completely agree. I mean, George Harrison, he's the king of those kind of the wanting more. Like, what's a um? I'm trying to think of a good something. Like the song song. Oh like, yeah. That solo. Like it's like, I don't know. It's it's simple enough, but then it's got enough nuance that I'm gonna keep listening to it over and over again until I get sick and tired. Yeah. That's the same thing with Communicate, and hopefully we'll see more of that. Um more of that on the record i'm super excited um oh, yeah so are we getting a tour that's a good question um <laughs> <laughs> definitely getting some shows there's no tour at the moment just because i mean it's just it's just too it's so prohibitively expensive to tour independently and i don't know i mean i i just with my life can't literally just can't leave the work that I'm doing to like make a living to go tour and lose money. So it's really, really tough. Um, unless like, I mean, yeah, it's hard. Uh, if, if there, if there was, if there was a real, real fan response to being receptive to a tour, 
I would I would do it, but it's like sometimes my music seems like such a niche thing to the the universe that I I kind of I kind of get down on myself like why bother? <laughs> um, I mean, so. but if anything, I, I mean, if anything, it's better though. You know, like the niche fans, we all love it so much, and we can all relate to it so much. Rather than a a big pop audience where like half the people are like, eh, half the people are you know. Because yeah. I mean, everyone I've met who listens to Communicate, everyone I've talked to and stuff, I don't know. It's just something, something about it. It's like, um, what's a, a good band? Ween. All the Ween fans are just like incredibly engrossed in it because it's Ween, you know? Communicate. Yeah, there, there's something really cool about um, having a secret. Like, yeah. like, like when I first heard about Big Star, I felt like I was one of 10 people in the zip code that knew big star and then you meet another big star thing like oh my god not only that's the kind of band where it's like oh now we're best friends because you like that mm -hmm. band and that's really cool that's a really cool thing and but then you know then you go on the internet and then there's millions of big star fans and you're like oh my god like i'm not special what happened to that amazing feeling of like my own little thing that i had and I would always like, I would listen to records. I'd listen to records of bands that like never made it. And I'd always go like, oh man, like whatever happened to them? I hope they did something. I hope they did this, blah, blah, blah. And now I, I think that I'm like, that's really stupid that I think that I should have just thought like, man, I hope they're happy. Like, I hope they're just really happy in their life. Or I'm just like, man, I'm so proud of them that they got to get this document to exist. Like to me, the success is the document. Like the record existing is the success. Because it, it's going to outlast you, you know, after you're gone. So yeah. um, it's really tough. A lot of people really want me to, to tour and to play. To be honest, I just don't love touring or playing live. I just, it, I'm, I'm a studio guy. Like, I have always really, really, really related to Harry Nilsson, Brian Wilson, the Beatles when they stopped touring. I relate to that so hard because... I don't know, just the road life's not for me. I, I'd like to be at, you know, at home recording, working on new music and just constantly finding new colors and like, you know, cooking dinner for my girlfriend. <laughs> it's just, it just means a lot more to me. I don't know Then it's just like the, the sleeping on the couch and the ruining your life and being in debt forever just to tour and rough it and play to 11 people in every state. It's like, I know it's part of the process. It's just like, a, it's, a, it's, it's tough. It's tough to want to, you know, it's tough to be a musician in 2024. So it's like, I feel like I'm compounding to how tough it is by, by touring. I feel like if I, um, if I try to put any of the effort towards maybe marketing on, on social media, that may, maybe that would help generate, you know, some, some tour love. Um, but okay. yeah, I gave you a pretty honest answer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, two things on that, right? I've never thought about, you gave me a really good new, um, mind process i guess thought process because like whenever they you know, like there's a band i really liked and they disband i'm just pissed that there's no new music i guess because of how spoiled um consumers now are with streaming right you get you're constantly over flooded with with like new stuff and this and that but you know not a thing to think about it you know you're glad that that band happened i'm glad that i stumbled upon like um which is just like this really small band I just randomly found on Spotify with one album. And they were great. And I, I don't yeah. know. That's really awesome. And then with the social media too, a little bit of that fake though, right? Like, I don't know. I kind of, I really like it when there's a, a natural um, reception to the music or there isn't and everyone's just Yeah, loves it. well, <laughs> that's why, you know, again, being an artist in 2024 is just uh, sucks because of social media. Like I, I mean, I don't want to do social media. I don't. I just want to, I I literally just want to make the music, put it out. I want someone else to worry about marketing it because it, it's just, it's just really slimy to sell myself. I just don't like it. And um, there, there's just, there's just no ands if or buts. And that's, you know, you're lost in a world of white noise. And I understand that. So you got to do the best you can to get the music out there. Um, and the hard part for me is there. there is something like 
when you listen to a band, you, you know, you're not just listening to the music. And that's why I understand people that can't separate the artist from the music because they're so intertwined. And it'd be hard to listen to like Radiohead if Tom York was like, hey, what's up, you guys? Uh, mm -hmm. We have a thing next week going on, you know, and I don't want to be the hey, what's up, you guys guy. Um, so I've been trying to find, I've been trying to find cool ways to do things on social media that are still me, that I'm still connecting with people. Um, I'm making like a playlist of songs I really liked. And oh, I, yeah, I've been, huh? yeah, I've been debating um, starting a, a Patreon for Communicant that would kind of make life a lot easier for me, like financially with doing the band mm -hmm. and kind of through that being really communicative with cool stuff. Hey, here's B-sides, demos, unfinished artwork. I mean, because the thing with me is just like that I'm always redoing things so many times and going through so many things there's just so much unreleased stuff and sometimes it makes me sad that it'll just it'll just sit on a hard drive forever but it's also kind of good at the same time because you get to get to control the exact document you know um yeah. i feel like i've answered every single answer like with an hour question uh <laughs> no, i'm i'm glad that we can we can talk and we can you know explore this a patreon would be awesome a patreon would be great i mean like because i i could not contribute to it but i know there's certainly a bunch of people that could you know and getting yeah. the sides and getting the the artwork that's another level i really like it when bands do that you know there's yeah. a couple of times when people will get on and, and do some cool stuff and it's always you know you feel closer i really like that yeah yeah um and i know bands don't like asking for money it's it, it's like a different it's like a different kind of thing it's it's more um you know success for me is having the time to do what you love mm -hmm. and i'm realizing that something like a patreon would give you that time you know it would it would cut back like a day or two off of your job schedule of like what you have to do to make a living the third of the week so um but you know that that stuff doesn't really matter <laughs> nah i mean i completely agree if you i don't know it's like the old the old bands will always talk about you know back in my day we never did any um social media we played shows and stuff but well yeah it was different you know um it's true like a lot of records they would just get like lost in the white noise you know yeah it's just and it sucks. It sucks that 2024, the way that, you know, streaming is and the way that musicians can't make money or they can't make good money, right? Unless you really market the hell out of yourself. And then at that point, are you yourself? And I guess like the whole album is yourself. So it's easy to lose yourself in that. Um, and I've met a lot of people that just kind of went crazy trying to do that. Um <laughs> You just have to let go. You just have to let go and realize that um, whatever you want to come out of the record is conditional. And like I said, the the success is the document existing. It's it's the fact that you know you did this for yourself and you created this this world, and that's something somebody else you know didn't do. Like that's something that's yours, um, and that's really cool. And and then on top of that that people anyone could have the same reaction to it that maybe you did is miracle <laughs> so it's uh my dream for this record is for someone to hear it and feel the exact same way that i do you know when i when i was working on this record um i felt like i was just in control of this little like golden orb <laughs> ball it was like it was like warm like whenever i would just work on the record it was just like warm and it was so lush and it was so like beautiful like i just i was putting so much love and like almost like a spiritual quality which i would i learned through brian wilson kind of injecting like like a there's like a spirit there's a spiritual quality in beach boys music there's also like a dark undertone to all the beach boys music yeah, yeah for sure um, it's so much, so much more under the surface. Um, and I think about that a lot. That's kind of like my Roman Empire. <laughs> yeah. then, if anything, this all ties back into psychedelia, right? Which is letting yourself go and being free. 
which people, I guess, have forgotten about nowadays. The point of communicant and why it's called communicant was I saw the name on paper. I thought about the idea of a communicant is like I saw like a wall and I saw someone on this side being like a conveyor of information to someone on the other side. And I realized communicants whole sonic identity are almost like movies. Um, like cinematic albums that there are worlds, like really, really thick worlds. That's to me like the only like must have of a community record. Like it has to be like a thick world that you can live in. Mm -hmm so thick that you can't do it again on the next album because then it would feel like diminishing returns. It'd yeah. be like, oh, I'm in the same world still. I don't know. It's it's really interesting. The hardest thing in the world is figuring out another world. Like that's so difficult, especially when you're really just um, writing from the heart and you're just, yeah. the, sometimes like your heart's going to give you like not what your like business brain or artistic brain wants because it's just what you're feeling. You you do have to just go with what you're feeling. Yeah. Um, if you fight it, it'll it'll just come across in the music somehow. You won't be sure how, but like people, it's subconscious. You just know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, all it's wow. This is like incredibly deep. Yeah, I really sorry. You gotta reflect on. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I can't. I'm so happy that we can. Um, what converse on this and I'm glad that <laughs> I get to hear this first is hmm. I mean just wow just wow so we've got um we've got eight minutes left and right. you and me are both chatterboxes so we're going to do one more question and I'm going to pray to God that we don't run out of time okay, okay. so you got to give me three songs three albums whatever three anything it can be anything not music it can be quotes it can be three books but three things that can change someone's life deep seven minutes and 36 seconds <laughs> um i think as essential as the beatles are i feel like that's a given but i feel like the beach boys are a really important band to study for a billion different reasons um especially like Pet Sounds, Smile, um, Friends, Sunflower, Surf's Up, Era. The story is just amazing. And, and Brian Wilson has just taught me so much about what it means to just be a human being and be alive and be a creative person. And uh, it's just, it that that really changed my life. Like, it, look, in the last year, if anything has changed my life the most, it's, it's Brian Wilson. Um, so that, that'll be my music one. <laughs> my other one in terms of regular life, I do live by treating people how I want to be treated. And it's important to not forget that every single human being is the exact same as you and is going through the exact same experience as you, has the same dreams as you, but they're all on different planes and they're all on their own journeys going here going there um working through their own stuff so always see the universe as yourself and if you're like at the grocery store or you know or you talk like the guy who's picking up your trash like ask him how they're doing and it's just feels so great to connect to people and you just you just feel so much love from talking to people yeah. about how they're doing, just shooting the shit. Like you'll never know who you'll run into, who you'll meet, what you'll learn. And once I really, really started like just having absolute like unrestrained love for all people, um, I've made so many friends, so many like really great friendships that I, I never had before because it's it, again it's not that you're ignoring anybody but it's just when you're growing up it just feel like you just see other people 
not just different than you. But once I just like kind of realized like, Hey, like everybody works at a job that they don't want to work at. Everybody um, has a dream that they're working on. Like everybody, you know, you just try to see the empathy in people. Um, and that's, that's a huge life changer when you really, really get there. Um, so it's, it's really great. That's why through doing any job that I do for money, um, I love it because I get to talk to people and I get to like interact with people. And that is just as rewarding as finishing a record, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then for the third thing that can change anyone's life is two ways to take care of yourself. One, I think self-care is really important. Like, um, I think like, get really into like skincare or wearing a like a nice shirt or like really nice pants that's like comfy like i've learned that you can dress up and still be comfy um with the right kind of clothes like pay attention to fabrics pay attention to certain things and that's big that's like really big on your mental health it makes you feel really good wake up in the morning and, and have a routine, um, like do a little thing for you, like every day, like, like make, uh, the smell of coffee or, you know, a, a specific sandwich and just like go to the grocery store and splurge on like one really nice cheese. And you'll be like, Oh my God, this is like my moment for the day. Like that stuff's really great. Um, that'll, that'll, that'll change your life. Um, yeah, I think that, that's everything I can think of right now. That's been pretty big, like, realizations. Um, well, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> that, that's great. And I, I think I, I've said this a lot, but I think I completely agree with you, right? Like, I've also started to... Um, I don't know. It's like I got, I got a hoodie from a concert I went to, and it makes me feel nice. I, it's comfy. I feel comfy. And I got some yeah. pants. I, I love sweatpants. Like, I'm wearing sweatpants right now. It's just... I feel good. And uh yeah. you know, now in the times of COVID and where everyone felt like shit and everyone felt terrible and life was terrible. Um we're all getting back to it, you know, with, with concerts, with music, with your new music, with whatever it may be, with the smell of coffee in the morning. We're getting back to it one step at a time. Um, I don't want to get cut off by the stupid Zoom thing this time. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for letting me interview you. Um, thank you i hope it's, it didn't, it's uh, honestly been a pleasure <laughs> I, I cannot wait for the new album it's so cryptic it's so black and white as you said and um i'm gonna spend the whole day it's what that's what i did with the um the smile put out the new album and i also felt that was really yes. beautiful and and reflective so maybe we'll see I mean, some similarities who knows but um really how much time do we have left on the on the zoom hmm? the second, how much time do we have left on the zoom yeah 56 156. All right, I'll give you a 56 second thing about this record. Um, piano, strings, lush, Love strings. Um, wooden atmosphere, chamber pop, baroque pop, um, lyrics, very important of lyrics on this record, really proud of the lyrics. Um, flows together, whole cinematic thing. Uh, this record is about dealing with self-sabotage about getting back to yourself about getting back to shore it's called harbor song because the harbor is land it's getting back to shore yeah. all the way you know what kind of lost out at sea kind of clearing a lot of the noise finding who you are getting back you know um it's about falling back in love with yourself and forgiving yourself um so what i want is for people I want this record to be a companion for people and and just that right day of the year when you feel the exact way that this record I was feeling when I was making this record. I want this record to do exactly what it did for you that it did for me. So that's that's my I small that so yeah. much. That's incredible. I'm gonna have to think about that. I'm only gonna be thinking about that. We have like 30 seconds left, so I don't want to get cut off. Thank you so much. I really appreciate <laughs> this. I'll try to get this out tonight. Um, and have a awesome night, man. Talk soon. See ya. Bye.